Hi, this is Rick Emmett of Triumph, and you're listening and watching Talk About Rock. Talking About Rock is sponsored by School of Rock, North Buffalo, where they're making musicians every day. Okay, joining us now, Canadian Music Hall of Fame artist and Canadian Music Industry Hall of Fame member, Mr. Rick Emmett. Rick, how are you? I'm good, Robert. How are you doing? Very well. Thanks for joining us today, man. You know, your unique songwriting and playing has shined through all these years in triumph. And now you have a new album, Diamonds, that just came out. Was it March 1st, I think? Tell us about putting together this project. Um, it was essentially a thing where I got my master's back from the period of my life, 1990 to 1995, 96. So, uh, and the guy that does uh, merch for me online at Rock Paper Merch, Greg Campbell, said, hey, why don't we do a compilation? And I said, why don't we, why don't we focus on the hard rock tracks? And so that was the genesis of everything. And then we went through the, you know, very lengthy process of him deciding it what he wanted a deluxe package with all kinds of extra thingies in it. And so that took a long, long time. It was supposed to come out the same time that my memoir came out last October. Oh, okay. And yeah, the lay it on the line, my my memoir on ECW Press. There's a commercial for you. And um <laughs> yeah, so now the 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 uh companion uh, co compilation package entitled uh, Diamonds is now out on rockpapermerch.com. Go and get your copy now. <laughs> yeah, I've been hey, looking you know what? Yeah. I wanted to say this. My older brother, his name was Robert Edward Emmett. So you're Robert Edwards. And I go, oh, that's kind of cool. When I saw it on the list, I went, hey, Robert Edwards, that's the that's a classy name. <laughs> that's for, that's not bad, right? Not bad. So yeah. excellent. Thank you so much. So, so yeah, the diamonds package. I've been looking through it. You know, the best of the hard rock years from 1990 to 95. Brand new compilation. Lots of really cool stuff in the deluxe package, like you're saying. Cool guitar picks, photos, and everything. And for all you folks out there that are listening, this is not going to be available on any of the streaming platforms. Okay. You can only get this from Rock paper merch, like Rick was saying, and I think there's going to be some stuff on the uh, Deco website too. They'll be selling. Yeah, Deco is kind of like the American distributor that has put it out to actual retail. So, you know, it's possible you could go to your sort of local uh, vinyl record store and find it if that's what you're sort of into. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they, and the, the the package is different. Like, they, they, there's a deluxe one where you get you get like a felt slip mat and you get um i i hand wrote lyrics and they did a, a limited lithograph of, of three pages of lyrics and there's postcard color pictures that had never been released before blah 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 so you know that's that's a pricey item but it's a collector's kind of a thing and then it, all the way down to like your sort of i think 50 dollar version of you get the gatefold album with the cd slipped into it as well which i'd never seen before but i went oh they do that now do they okay great yeah, stuff. very, very cool stuff. Well, let's get into the meat of this here. Let's talk about the songs that you have for us on here. I've been lucky enough to listen to these tracks. It's, these songs are great. So starting with Drive Time, this really showcases your your rock blue style once again. Great, great opening track. Yeah, I you know, I mean, the uh, obviously I've been doing a round of interviews for this, and I keep, keep mentioning the fact that uh, Randy Cook, the, uh, you know, incredibly superior drummer, I hired him for this first album after leaving Triumph, and he was so great uh, on that track in particular. And there's a million stories I could tell, but um, and the bass player Chris Brockway, the, the rhythm section was uh, phenomenal. So, um, but I, the the other thing about that is I do this little chicken picking, right down to the do 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 do. Right, which you're which you're known for that, right? You're known for that type of style. That's definitely you know that's Rick Emmett's playing. Well, I, like, I mean, I'm a rock player, but there's little things like that, which are like, you know, I I like Chet Atkins, too. You know, there, you hear it in Mark Knopfler's playing as well, right. that kind of 
you know, he's a, he, he's a rock player. And, and if you're a rock guy, you came out of blues. But there was always a side of me where I kind of liked finger style things, too. You know, so Drive Time was nice because it had a marriage of kind of, you know, all this crazy uh, country, country chicken picking and then, you know, extremely hard rock. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Right, so talking about the hard rock, definitely got another another song on here called Bang On, which definitely took me back to the Triumph days, you know, with a lot of power and positivity in your music. I think that's what really always shined about the Triumph songs, right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, and, you know, in that particular instance, that song, I actually do that on an arch top big body jazz guitar but i tuned it in an open c tuning and sort of played it in the same way that like keith richards kind of plays nice meaty chords so it, it kind of had a rolling stones vibe to it to me but then i went yeah but you know i don't want to sing like mick jagger so I, and then i went <laughs> oh, I, I, I want queen and, and so there was these big choruses and uh we had a woman's colleen allen who was in my band she, she sang in the backgrounds that make them, you know, these big shiny uh, background vocals. So it was great, you know. Um, and and it, you know th that record, it didn't really get much of a that album. That whole album didn't get much of a bump, uh, promo wise or marketing wise in the states. So it's kind of nice for these songs to get a second life and 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 uh, get a chance to breathe again and be out there. And and I got to listen to remasters of them and go, oh yeah, this was pretty big and shiny. It was kind of fun. Right, and I love, again, you have you know, Saved by Love on here, which is outstanding. And the other track, which is really a beautifully haunting spirit memory track, When Her Heart Breaks. Just, just an yeah, outstanding I mean, track. Thanks. I, I, I didn't necessarily want to put it on this package, but uh, Greg, the guy that was sort of putting it together, he insisted because he really liked that song. And, you know, radio is a funny thing. Like, when that album came out here in Canada, um, that song became a kind of a hit on radio down on the East Coast, uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia in particular, uh, Newfoundland. And so it's like, you, you, you can't control those kinds of things. Sometimes weird things happen where a, somebody at radio decides, oh, I'm going to play this. And then it gets good phones. And then, you know, now other stations are deciding, well, we got to play it. Those other guys are playing it. But it, it only happens regionally. You know, it doesn't necessarily happen on a big wide scale. I mean, obviously, I, you know, I guess nowadays, if you're, I don't know, Taylor Swift or Bruno Mars or, you know, Ariana Grande or something like that. You know, you put out your song and everybody plays it. But yeah, radio, radio days, is a yeah, radio is a whole different animal these days than than it used to be. Right, a lot a lot yeah, of that has, has definitely changed. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't really relate on that level. But you know, I I still relate to music on this level here, and I relate uh, by you know coming on your podcast and saying, "Hey, you guys interested in getting some old stuff on vinyl? Great." <laughs> Yeah, just out, just outstanding tracks. Like I was saying, this this album is just a masterful representation of your ability and style. That's th that's definitely that's definitely how I see it. When I heard the songs, I was like I said, you you know this is Rick Emmett's style. There were so many so many folks that I grew up with playing guitar, and they're always trying to figure out your little licks and your little things that you would put on these albums because it was just like a standout thing for you, your standout style. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally. Now, I mean, the thing, too, is, of course, getting out of Triumph and going out on my own, this period of my life, I was trying to establish myself in a different songwriter kind of way, too, because now I didn't have to necessarily feed the image of what Triumph, you know, was as a collective between the three partners. Right. So, you know, I tried to expand my lyric writing a little bit. That's why songs like Big Lie were on there and, and, and World of Wonder was on Absolutely. And I don't know if it was on the compilation, but and, and you know, the, that thing, like you mentioned, Heartbreaks, it was a it was a power ballad. And I think in some respects, you know, in Triumph, when we did those kinds of songs, Gil wanted to sing them because he wanted to be on the radio, you know, and it was like, OK, so I didn't really get a chance in the, in the later stages of the band to, to be able to put out tracks like that. So but, you know, I was trying to grow as a singer and a songwriter. Um, and, and that kind of shows up, I think, on the Diamonds package as well.
Oh, definitely does. Definitely does. And you've you've always had some some great standout tracks, you know, singing on, you know, Magic Power, Lay It on the Line, you know, rock anthems, really. These were you guys were the beginning of arena rock uh, back in the day. It was just crazy. And I was reading on some early history that I didn't know. So one of my favorite tracks you guys put out, The Blinding Light Show. From the first album, Triumph, which was which was relabeled in the beginning, you had actually done that with a previous band called Act Three. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, the co-writers on that tune are Denton Young and Chris Brockway, and then Chris ended up playing bass in uh, in the Rick Emmett band when I left Triumph. He was the first bass player that that uh, I, I had working with me, and uh, great musician. Uh, and I think Blinding Light Show really it was probably his idea. He was the guy that brought that to the band and had this hook, blinding light show. And that the thing that's sort of in that song is the level of irony, you know, like, oh, the big rock show, but it blinds you to the to the truth, you know. Right. And uh, which I really liked that idea a lot. And in Act Three, it was a, a very good kind of idea to have. It was a very prog track when we originally did it. It had uh, things that were sort of in different time signatures. Like that riff that Triumph does that went like bum ba ba da ba doodle little da da do 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 in Act Three it went bum ba ba da ba da doodle little da da it had like an extra little beat in it so okay. that it would be like yeah like a little bar of five kind of thing it was like what's that you know <laughs> um, and of course the Triumph guys go let's do it in straight time you know right right um, so but uh, that side of Triumph that prog side. I was always trying to push the envelope a little bit and have it be that so that when I left and like, there's a song on the diamond thing, stand and deliver. It was like, that was kind of really where, where I wanted triumph to go as an arena band, like to go more towards a heavier kind of Zeppelin. And there were bands like rush was a band that was like that. Uh, Dream theater was a band that became very much that, you know? Right. And I really liked that stuff a lot. And I think Blinding Light Show was sort of the roots of that. And I think it shows up on the Diamonds thing as stuff like Stand and Deliver, right? Definitely. Yeah, just some outstanding music. And not only that, you also teach music, songwriting, and you've written for Guitar Player Magazine as well. I have. Yes, I've had a long and checkered life, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have a lot going on, and you've brought us some great music. It's It's been amazing, you know, and I... And I dare say, you know, the magic power of the, of, of the three of you guys back in the day with your shows is very missed uh, in this day and age, you know, I have to say. And for our younger audience out there who may not be aware, Tribe was nominated for multi, multi Juno Awards, including Group of the Year for 79, 85, 86, and 87. Just some amazing stuff going on with you guys. So, of course, of course, I have to ask you the same question that every interviewer is asking you that's on everyone's mind. And all the Triumph fans, mine worldwide, will we see Triumph perform again? I I doubt it. You know, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to you know take out a sharp little pin and prick the balloon of hope, but um, I, honestly, I think uh, when we did the the Triumph documentary and we we rehearsed for Gil rehearsed for a long time to sort of get him some. We only played three songs, but he right. was going to sing and play "Lights Go Down," and and you know he hadn't played in. Ever since we did the Sweden reunion, he hadn't touched, hadn't sat down and played any music, touched his drums. So, um, and then when we did that, at the end of it, I think he went, okay, I'm done. You know, <laughs> like he, a show of hands, like uh, it, uh, and I, it's just, uh, it's a lot to ask of him, the whole idea of singing half the show, but you're sitting right. there and you're trying to drum uh, an extremely, um, aggressive kind of a set of music for anybody that has to play drums and I, you know i would say in, in a triumph situation in a trio situation but even more you know rick emmett writes these tunes where you know it's like i want to get i want to get busy in it so i'm going to need a drummer to play a lot of fills and and you know gill was game for uh, a long run and then he like now he goes yeah i think i've had enough you know my back doesn't like this my right. shoulders my my wrists you know my elbows. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there was a time. I I, I don't know if, if folks know this, but when we did the uh, the live album stages, we don't we played a long tour, and when we came off it and we were doing that, the, the record company wanted a couple of tracks, and there was one where 
Gil couldn't, his, his elbow was so sore. Now, I think it was maybe from playing too much golf as well as, <laughs> you know, drums. playing too much <laughs> drums. But we, we had to have another guy sit in and, and play a drum part on one of the tracks uh, because he, he he couldn't do it. He, he, he was in sort of rehab for his, for his elbow. So, you know, Gil was always a very avid golfer. And I think that over time, I think, that kind of cost him a little bit too. Yeah. He goes now and he gets a physio so that he can still go golfing. But the idea of touring and playing drums, uh, its a, I think it's a non-starter. I understand, I understand. Well, you guys have brought us so much amazing music and you've come here today to talk about your, your the new stuff coming out here. So folks, you can pick up the new album, Diamonds. You can also have a signed deluxe edition, which has got 400 collector sets, which are now available for pre-sale at Rick's web store, like he was saying, rockpapermerch.com. And also a limited number of hand-signed editions will be available through uh, Deco Entertainment's website, definitely. So yeah. such very cool stuff. Thank you so much, Rick, for your time today. We really appreciate it, and thank you for all the music, man. Great stuff. You're welcome, Robert. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on.